the kind of broth that my mother would say would warm the cockles of your heart. And this you learned from your grandfather, you say? Yeah, barbecue pork recipe says. When you see your grandfather next, I'd like you to tell him that he should be very, very proud of his grandson. Thank you so much, Chef. Well done. Thank you, Chef. This next mystery box challenge presents a golden opportunity. Win this mystery box, and you gain control of the competition. Lose, and someone else will have your fate in their hands. I don't want to go home. So if I win this, then I'm automatically safe from elimination. 11 of you stand before us right now. By the end of the day, there will be at least one less home cook in this competition. Those of you left standing will be the top 10 finalists in MasterChef Canada. Top 10 in Canada is huge. Are you kidding me? Top 10 MasterChef Canada? Yeah, that's a big deal. Eric, what would you like to see under that box beside a first aid kit? <laughs> I have, like, so much to prove. The judges are really watching me now. I didn't finish the last mystery box. They think I'm careless. I cut my finger. Benny! I have the mystery box in my fingertips. Something crazy is going to happen. On the count of three, one. This mystery box could have absolutely anything inside. Two. I'm hoping to see my kid, but the box is too small. Three left. <laughs> <laughs> I lift the mystery box, and there's mini Eric. <laughs> oh, look how cute I am. <laughs> Ballerina. <laughs> I was not expecting to see him underneath this mystery box. I'm proud of that 16-year-old in the picture because he was fearless. I came out in a community where people don't come out in. Pino, why are you crying? It just reminds me of my boys. They look a little bit like me. And it's been a while, so I, I miss him a little bit. Sorry. It's, it's not like I left a job. I left my life. I left my world. That's all I know is my boy. Sorry. <laughs> Just miss them. Tamara, what's going through your mind? Just remembering my dad. He was uh, really big into food and the culinary world, and uh, that's what I'm going to channel for, for today, for sure. They're wonderful emotions. You should embrace it. I'm going to put it into the food today. That's a great strategy. Take a good look at your younger self. What was that dish that triggered your passion for cooking so long ago? We want your photograph to inspire an irresistibly original dish that tells us something about you. Be smart. Be innovative. And cook from your heart. But don't spend too much time walking down memory lane. You only have 60 minutes to make your dish. You have full access to the equipment room, but only five minutes in the pantry. Ready! Your 60 minutes starts now! So I'm making chassis tongwa, which is pretty much barbecue pork and soup noodles. Ooh. And then I'm going to make a pork broth with some spinach. I'm making a curry shrimp, roti, sliced avocados, and a pepper chutney. Definitely reminds me of my twin sister. You have 30 minutes left. Pino, Pino, what's going on? I'm making some uh, homemade gnocchi, and I have some uh, breaded uh, veal cutlet. It reminds me of my mom. Uh, fettine, we call them, like breaded veal. That's uh, one of our staples as we were kids. I wish I had a mom like that. I ate instant noodles, that's how I ever ate. Good old mac and cheese. Good old mac and cheese, yeah. That was a staple at home, was it? Growing up, my mom raised me, single mom. We didn't have a lot of money. I ate a lot of mac and cheese. <sighs> so yeah, today I'm making a fancy one. So how are you going to be elevating your mac and cheese? I'm going to pay homage to my roots and show how far I've come since then. 
<laughs> what have you got in there, bay leaf? I've got bay leaf, a touch of tarragon, salt, pepper, and some bacon. That's smart. Thank you. Mm. Got some good flavor there. Thank you, chef. Just check on the seasoning, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Mike, this looks delicious. Potatoes. Wow. Those are incredible. Thank you. Very nice. What are you making here? Uh, so I've got a braised goat. Wow. I just took the pressure cooker off now. Have you ever used a pressure cooker before? Uh, yeah, just once or twice. Wow. You think this is a little tough? If I were you, I would uh, throw it back on. This. Yep. That worries me. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for the heads up there. Twenty minutes left. You have twenty minutes left. Do you have any flour? Uh, yes. Some um, right there. Right there. Hi, Rick. Hi, Chef. Now, this is a typical Chinese kitchen. And then I see, you know, pressure cooker is not used a lot of Chinese cuisine. So what's in the broth? My grandpa always does pork and spinach broth. Well, I never had pork and spinach broth, so that's a very unusual combination for Chinese broth. He always does it, and I love it. Make sure you have my chopsticks ready, OK? Thank you. I'm putting um, the liver. Um through the chinoise so that way it's not grainy. And so when it comes out, it's a nice smooth pate instead of grainy liver pieces. Apple's going to the onions to give a bit of sweetness to the chopped liver? You got it. Okay. And I'm finishing off with a sherry uh, vinegar and some uh, sherry wine. Wow, and the pork. Uh, yeah. I, I like it, lots of alcohol. Is that the homage to your father? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, chef. What are you making here? I am making curry shrimp with roti. Have you cooked with shrimp before? Yes. That's delicious. Wow, that is hot. Yes, I didn't put that much in it. Oh. <laughs> Ten minute time check. Ten minutes remaining. I gotta get some color in here. I gotta get my gnocchi in and into the pan. There's a few things that could go really wrong here. How is Pino's gnocchi? I prefer a bit more sauce, but other than that, I think he's doing well. I can't wait for you guys to try Marita's dish. But it looks like a very small portion, so I hope I'm going first. Pasta, I'm just cutting now. And then I gotta boil it. Oh, man. Yeah, I got a lot to do in a little bit of time. Five minutes left. You have five minutes remaining. Come on. I'm cooking. Uh, I'm OK, because it is fairly simple. It all comes together. And then it's just really a couple of bit of blow torch in after that. And I'm really comfortable with it. <gasps> oh, that was close. One minute! The home cooks have just moments to spare in a mystery box inspired by their childhood photos. Finishing touches should be going on the plate, wiping down, and final checking. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! I'm really happy with how my dish turned out. I'm actually, for once, like, super proud and just super confident with my dish. The judges will now take one last look at the dishes before selecting the three best for tasting. It looks good. I would actually see myself ordering that in a restaurant. The winner of this mystery box will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge that will determine who makes it into the top 10 of MasterChef Canada. They should call me for the top three because the sauce is super tasty and the goat is nice and tender. Today, you were inspired by your childhood memories. And there were some great results. The first dish we want to see was made by a home cook who wanted to honor their background. They made the kind of hearty comfort food that leaves people wanting more. Pino, please bring your dish up. It's a tribute to my mom, my memory as a kid, and it looks perfect and I'm sure it tastes even better. You know, tell me what the dish is. Growing up, we had so many veal cutlets. Watched my mom make gnocchi. She made everything from scratch. We're Italian, we always made a lot of pastas. And that was one of my favorite things watching her make. The veal scallopini. Lightly breaded, pan fried. Nicely cooked peas, the veal scallopini, seasoned to the tea. Well done, Pino. Thank you very much. Are we gonna be short and sweet? I wish I had your mother too. Thank you very much, Chef. The second person who made it into the top three showcased perfectly cooked protein. 
with gorgeous aromatic sides. Marita, please bring your plate up. While I cook this dish, I put a lot of love into it. I really thought of my family. Curry and seafood is what I grew up on. And it reminded me of my sister because she cooks like a Trinidadian grandma, also like my mom. The avocado, I guess, is uh, designed to cool everything down a bit? Yes, nice and creamy. Hmm. It works. This is, to date, the best dish I've had. It's really, it's incredible. Oh, thank you could have this in a restaurant anywhere. Oh, wow. I want the recipe. Yes. Thank you, sir. I think I should do this the right way, on the road here, right? Yes, that's Which right. Which is nicely done. No forks allowed. No forks allowed, that's right. Oh, I'm in love. Yes. Thank you, chef. It's such a big compliment. The third dish was exactly what we have been waiting for from this home cook. It shows where they're from and what they have learned. And we hope it's the beginning of more great things from this person. Please step forward. Eric. This is absolutely the dish that I'm most proud of. It represents my background, shows my skill, and it, it honors my grandpa fantastically. Eric, what's the inspiration? This is a classic dish my grandpa always made for me, and he's mostly my inspiration. It's uh, cha siu tong mian, which is Chinese barbecue pork soup noodles. Grandpa taught you well. You did all this from scratch in one hour. Yeah. Hosek. Hosek. I'm going to It's the kind of broth that my mother would say would warm the cockles of your heart. This you learned from your grandfather, you say? Yeah. Barbecue pork recipe says. When you see your grandfather next, I'd like you to tell him that he should be very, very proud of his grandson. Thank you so much, Chef. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. We need a moment to consult. It's great to see some dynamic, fresh flavors. Everything just hit that mark. It was balance, it was technique. I would put them both dishes as equal. So we all agree. Three outstanding dishes inspired by your childhood memories. I want to be Canada's first master chef. Every dish that I put out helps me progress to that. But only one can win this mystery box challenge. I know this is the top dish. It has the flavor, it has the technical difficulty, and it has the innovation. The winner of this challenge the cook that right now has the competitive advantage. I know I did really well. Is it good enough to win? I think so. Is Eric. Thank you so much, chefs. I won the most important challenge in this competition yet, so I'm pretty stoked. Eric, for winning the mystery box, you will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. Please follow us into the MasterChef Canada pantry. A little disappointed wasn't me. Obviously, I really wanted to win. But then I look at Eric, and um, he's a great cook.